Welcome to the Floor Academy Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hedin, owner of Illustrious Hardwoods in Phoenix, Arizona. We're here to talk with flooring professionals from all across the country about the issues that matter to you. This week's guests are Joe and Hannah Dawson. Hannah started working with her dad at the age of three and is now known as the Wood Floor Queen. Listen in as they both explain how she got her start in the flooring industry. Hannah has some amazing insights into what can help us work with and train up the next generation of professionals. Listen in to hear some words of wisdom from this amazing 11-year-old. Joe Dawson, are you on the line? Yes, sir. Hannah Dawson, do I have you on the line? Yes, sir. Awesome. I love that respect and the, and the Southern twang. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, thank you both for joining me. Uh, I We have a special episode where we will have our, our youngest interviewee ever, and uh, that would be Hannah. So let's start by, Joe, why don't you give me a little background on you, who you are, what you do, um, how you got into the business, things like that, and then Hannah will have you do the same thing. Okay, fantastic. Um, again, I'm Joe Dawson, Dawson Hardwood Floors, and uh, we've been uh, in the flooring business here for on the Mississippi Gulf Coast uh, for about 20 years. So, been doing it for quite some time. Uh, we uh, started with a uh, company here in Mississippi uh, over 20 years ago and worked with them from the ground up. Uh, and that company had uh, started in the 1950s here and uh, continued on uh, till about 2005. I think they went out of business, something like that. But uh, that company uh, took me in as a, a entry level employee, and I came in and learned all the uh, different things of the trade: how to uh, run a drum machine and. How to you know run a job site? That really everything from the ground up. And uh, the particular guy I worked for actually uh, never really trained uh, people except for one thing. And uh, you know we have many multiple uh, trades. You know in mm-hmm. this doing finishing, installing, and um, the uh, and sand and finishing. You know sanding and uh, and repairs. So, but he never let anybody learn really anything outside he had installers doing installs he had sanding people sanding and he had finishing people finishing he never really let one guy go to you know multi- he never cross trained people mm-hmm. uh, however uh, times got tough and uh, so I was a guy that kind of played around on each band you know <laughs> okay. so I ended up being able to learn all the different trades and actually uh, went into business for myself well, good for you. I'm glad you were able to get that education. So, Hannah, how did you get started in hardwood flooring? And let me let everyone know how old you are because that's just it's absolutely amazing. Okay, I am Hannah Dawson. I am 11 years old from this February, and I actually started doing um, wood flooring with my dad since I was three years old. It um it started since my mother was a nurse, then she couldn't watch me, where I went with my father on a job site. And I, at first, my first thing I did on a job was I started doing the vacuuming stuff because I was like, wow, look at these big machines and <laughs> everything. And I was like, I want to do what my dad's doing. So... It was it was a really cool experience for me because it was my very first time ever even going on a job site. And I was like, I want to help my dad with all these things because he was running all these big machines. And we and he he would um, when I, whenever I was smaller, he would um, let me run the machines, but he would like hold me behind. So like I wasn't actually doing it, but I was like, wow, I can do a machine with my dad, which is um which to me was a very exciting and amazing thing for me. I thought it was super fun how I got to run these big machines and my dad and everything. And that's how it really got started. 
That's that's awesome. <laughs> you know, I, I let my kids ride on my lap to drive from the mailbox to home and they think it's cool because they get a drive. So <laughs> I, I I can see where, you know, that's going to work. So that was going to be one of my questions is how did you end up on the job site? So your mom's a nurse and mm-hmm. somebody had to watch you. So, Joe, how uh, I wouldn't bring a three year old to a job site, man. You're never going to be able to get anything done. I, like walk walk me through how it kind of went and how well, you the, know. Uh, it's kind of funny because uh, Hannah's not your typical child, so she wasn't one that was just uh, you know we would be in houses and they would have multiple bedrooms, you know, different things that uh, places that weren't you know maybe a room had tile or maybe a room had carpet or whatever and. It was, you know, fully furnished or whatever. It really wasn't a, you know, so many, I mean, you know, I used discretion on which jobs she went to. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously you couldn't just take her to a brand new construction site, you know, with lots of people there and everything. But uh, we did um, quite a few residentials. And uh, in these cases, you know, their customer was gone or they had a room, you know, that wasn't being done or whatever. And the customer was totally fine with letting her uh, hang out in a room, you know, or watch TV in a room or, you know, and uh, so she would be in one room and I'd be in the other and we'd go in there and check on her, you know, and uh, eventually she came out of those rooms and came in there and tried to see what I was doing. And I actually have um, several pictures of her on Instagram there of her very first job when she was three uh, one, she's, uh, sanding a corner with a piece of sandpaper <laughs> and, uh, and then the other one she has, uh, uh, she's vacuuming. She wanted to learn how to vacuum and, and deal with the vacuum there. But that eventually, uh, changed and, you know, over time, you know, we put her on random orbital and, uh, she just kept working her way up, you mm-hmm. know? Well, you're going to get a little bit older, a little bit more strength, a little bit more knowledge. So right, right. Makes, makes perfect sense. So Hannah, you've you've grown up in the wood floor industry more than probably most people that you know there's there's kids that are generations into a wood floor business but being on the job site since three is phenomenal you have more flooring experience than i do i've been in wood flooring for five years i i know absolutely nothing so (laughs) (laughs) um what is so exciting about it to an 11 year old girl, you know, I, I let's, let's get the semantics out of the way. And, and most girls are going to want to play with a doll or run around with their girlfriends. Uh, most kids your age are probably playing Fortnite these days or it's something like that. You know, there's just, they're not interested in what mom and dad are doing. So what is so exciting about wood floors to a 11 year old girl? Well, the thing to me is that it, since it actually helped me to start at a really young age because when you go in there, like if you first start at the job at my age, like you said, you're probably going to be like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I want to go play video games or something like so. But since I started at a young age, like I said, I got to, I, I just, there was actually a couple reasons. The first one is I love my dad a whole lot. And <laughs> The fact that I got to be able to be with him all day long, and I got to help. It just was like, yay, I get to help. I get to be with my dad. I get to help. And then another thing is, is when I got from the age of like five or six, I like my dad said, I started random orbitals, the palm sander. Mm -hmm. And I actually, since I knew what I was doing, because I did it for two years, I was, I actually was able to help, like, at first, when I was younger, like, I helped, but I wasn't doing a very efficient job, because I was, like, three or four, (laughs) but when I got a little bit older, like, at five or six, I actually started helping, and Mm -hmm. I was actually getting work done, and the thing is, is I was happy, and I thought it was fun that I got to help my dad, I got to hang out with him all day, and And you got to make money, too, and I get to run a machine, (laughs) Yeah, I hope there's a little bit of money in there too. That's an even bigger bonus. Oh yeah, and then the other thing is Hannah, and you got to think about this: is what you said 
is actually funny because it's that way with every single employee that you start out and they don't know anything. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> they're actually not really helping you. You're more helping them than they are helping you. And, and that's the way it is when you're training somebody. Really, they're not really. <laughs> I yeah. mean, they are an extra pair of hands, but you're really spending a lot of time teaching somebody something, hoping that they will do something with it rather, you know, than, them, you know, not wanting to do something with it after a while. So, Correct. Uh, so it really, there's so much to learn that it takes a couple of years to have somebody be productive on the job site, no matter who they are, if they're adult, uh, child, whoever it is, it, you know, there's so much to learn that, uh, to be, uh, efficient, like you said, it, it takes a couple of years of, diligent uh training to be even be helpful at any age really that that's exactly it i mean hannah can you think back you know i'm sure now when you go and help your dad on a on a job site you don't have to ask him what's next too often you probably have a pretty good rhythm with him to where you can see what he's doing and you know what's next but you know at four five six seven eight years old was that what you were doing you had to go to him and say okay now what dad okay now what dad well, actually, at the um, age of eight, through my life, a part of my age of eight and nine, I actually wasn't with my father because of a divorce situation. So it was really from um, seven, part of my eight, and then younger. But I, about, like, whenever I was about from the age of five, I was still asking and stuff. But maybe around later, like my later, whenever I was uh, almost seven, like my late six, I um, I started to understand the rhythm, like actually get it. Like, oh, so now we sand, now we do the buffing for the clean it up. Now we do the same. Now we do the thing. I got the rhythm. Okay. And maybe like whenever I was like, um, like when I was partly through six and then older. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you, you got in there. You had to stop asking less questions. I, you, you basically, you're on an accelerated program because you're so young, but I, your timetable sounds pretty standard for, like, normal apprentice, and you don't even show up five days a week. Right. <laughs> exactly right. So that's even, that's more impressive. Um, what, what makes wood flooring so exciting? You know, why, besides getting to use the machines and, and help your dad, what makes you, you love it so much? Like versus, you know, you could go learn how to, how to lay some tile. You can do what I do, which is 90% click together vinyl plank flooring or laminate flooring. You know, what, what makes the wood <laughs> so exciting? Well, first, it's the the technique the art of actually doing it like how you're actually like you're taking a floor that is completely different and it's like like tile and stuff it's the same thing every time every time you put down grout every time you put down your tile every time but with wood flooring every single time it's going to be different it's never going to be the same and it's not just one thing it's that you have many different things and it's just really the art of it and then they, you know, let me interject something there because i thought about this and it's a, uh, we don't uh, have a lot out there that you know that she does but she does love installation too so there at the beginning you know we did uh, you know we didn't have her doing any type of installs or anything like that but mm -hmm. later on you know as she yeah. you know one of the things that she came in and she was really interested in was how to use miter saws, how to use all the different construction side. Uh, and then she really showed a peaked interest in those things. And she's really an ace with, <laughs> with well, uh, miter saws and things like that. Okay. But, uh, due to today's uh, people and how they are, you really can't put a whole lot of that out there. <laughs> because people freak out you know and the yeah. kid you know even 11 years old they're running a saw by themselves and they're doing it like a boss but 
you know, there's a lot of people, oh my God, she's going to cut her fingers off. Don't let that kid touch us all or whatever. But, uh, so she's really excited about the, uh, installation side of the business as well, which is a pretty well, a, a big open slate for her, you know? Mm-hmm. See, I, I like, I love sanding, but for, I like sanding. It's my second favorite thing to do from it all, but probably my first thing, like my dad said, is installing. Now, I like doing installing for a couple reasons. First of all, like my dad said, I can ace the miter saw. Like, whatever his work, I can I can use the small D-walls. I can't use the sliding ones. Okay, yeah, we don't have you on that double bevel no, compound no. miter. Not <laughs> that one, okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But she is on the single, uh, you know, miter. And... I, I, whenever, whenever I... Use it, my like we have a workers go do it, and the reason why is actually my first time I ever used the miter saw. I actually remember it is because we were at a job, and our worker we had our worker doing our cuts for us, and we wanted it to be square because there wasn't going to be a trim going there, so we wanted it to look square so we wouldn't have different levels of um, flooring. And our worker couldn't get not one board square together. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. And then actually what, what happened was my, um, the first couple of last, for the first couple of cuts, my dad went out there and did it. And I was like, Hey, can you teach me how to use that? And I was, I was nine. Yeah, I was nine. Yeah, you and nine. I was almost 10. I was nine. And I was, um, and my dad, he sat outside and he taught me. So he, he was like, now keep your hand over here. Make sure it's straight. Make sure it's all the way against it. And then it was my first time ever doing a cut. And then for some of the cuts in the job, I cut. And it was, and my, and I believe part of it is my eyesight and how I mark it. It's, it's, and it's, I had every single one square that I cut. My dad was like, wow, you can cut every single one square. And then whenever I got, um, whenever I got, um, like at the age of 10 and a little bit farther on, my dad started letting me do it by myself. So like he could <laughs> stay on the floor, like mm. in the job mm-hmm. and I could go outside and use it. And ever since I have the micro saw and that's just one of the things that I use on the job. He's also taught me how to use the nail guns and every single time we do an install, I help him hammer it in, which actually he um, now at um, uh, we our workers we have them on the job, and my dad will be like, you know what, you 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 keep messing up. How about you go over here and take a break, and I'll be in there, and and I'll usually help them or whatever do it. And it because there's also it's just the smallest thing like a hammer that can mess up really bad <laughs> like it's just you have to even have a technique with a hammer to get the scoring right so it's, everything it's, requires a technique so even you, you have to be a professional vacuumer you have to be a professional nailer you have to be a professional racker you have to be a professional cutter which, <laughs> definitely which is, there's no is, everything which, you have to be over above and beyond on and that's yeah, why it's just, so stressful and people can't do it they just it, which it's is, too much for their brain. I was going to say, which is a thing for our workers, since I'm a child, I'm 11 years old, when I try to correct them or tell them to do something, they never want to listen to me because you're like, oh, you're a child. Oh. Like, I have seven years of experience. <laughs> well, actually, eight now. But um, nobody, <laughs> it's so, that's another reason why I like, um, I like also like why I like it is because of nobody ever believes you at first until they see that you, a child, can actually do these things. Oh, this is too fantastic. All right, I've gotta say I love how there are workers 
<laughs> and then that you try and teach them and they get frustrated. So, Joe, do you ever use Hannah to go in and try and train them and like purposely frustrate your employees? I purposely do that all the time. And so yes. if a person. Yes, he we, does. Uh, I do remember one that we uh, specifically that we did. We hired a uh, a guy and he's an ex-Marine. And uh, so he came oh, and, yeah, and he, uh, he actually <laughs> held a salute every time, you know, he would come and he would give me, he's like, and uh, I want to show you my work. Come check my work out, you know. And when I would walk in, he would have this mo- marine stance with his uh, uh, almost where he was at a half salute uh-huh. and have his hand on his uh, uh, hip, you know. And uh, and so we would come in, and I would look at the floor, and uh, and uh, and uh, he would uh, uh, ask me, you know, how how good a job you know he was doing, and. I told him, he "Hey, look, you're gonna have to learn this. Um, yes, this he was epic. Using the epic. He was using right. I told him he's gonna have to learn the epic, and the epic and started was, throwing him around. At this, at this job, um, the um, the lady, she was like, "Hey, if you want, I have a daughter, and I actually got along with the daughter really well. And she was like, "Hey, you want to come and swim with me? And I'm and I'm an expert swimmer, so I was like, "Yeah, sure. And so I was swimming that day with um the customer's daughter and we were playing in the pool and everything and then all of a sudden my dad calls me i'm like hannah i'm in a bathing suit right you know i get out i dry off i i walk in the room and he's got this marine in here and he's using the epic and trying marine, to use it and the marine was like what's she doing in here and she was like hannah come run this and i went in there and i ran it and i was like what and he got real mad like he <laughs> he walked off and he started mumbling and everything I was like <laughs> because of he because to me I know the technique to use it and he did it and my dad kept trying to teach him and teach he him couldn't get it so I said well let me let me get a girl and get her in here and show you because he's saying, you know, basically it can't really hardly be done, you know. And mm-hmm. it was, he was in there for an hour wrestling the machine. I, I, it I, made, just let me go get my daughter it and it she'll show you how to use this machine and give you, uh, <laughs> you know, and give you uh, a lesson in it. I wasn't even 11. I was 10. You were 10. Like, and you showed him how to use it with one hand, and the machine was brutally whooping him around the room. He was, he could not stand behind the machine. He was about to go through the walls and the windows, and uh, and then Hannah came in and ran it to a T with one hand. Oh my god! And the goodness. guy totally just totally went down on his knees. Oh my god! I gotta learn this. I gotta learn this. And That's it actually out. helped him. In a yeah. couple of hours, he actually hey, he started happened, using it. That happened. That happened to our worker, um, Lee. Yep, you, you did him yeah, the same that's way. How, that's how we got. That's how we got him to do the buffer too. He right. could not run that buffer for anything in the world until <laughs> my dad started saying, "Here, come in here, Hannah." And getting him so mad, he was like, you know what, man? I'm going to learn this buffer. If a 10-year-old can do it, then I can do it. Oh, if it kills man. me, I'm going to learn how to do it. And you're, now, you're doing all these guys dirty. And see, <laughs> he actually uses it. And it, it, it's almost like I'm a motivation because they're like, I can't let a little girl do this and I can't do this. So they go in there and they try, actually. Like, and uh, some time ago, they had the, uh, the wood floor queen... Uh, challenge on the internet on uh, Instagram Wherever, and on uh, Facebook because that's how that's how I got famous um, right when they I did was, the when I was 10 when I was 10 was um, younger like I was like in the middle of my age of 10 I started running the epic with my pinky and everybody went crazy with that and that's actually how I got famous is from running the epic with my pinky and because very few people can run yeah, epic with a pinky at, at first and at first they got, at first I got picked on and people were really mean to me. They were like, well, she's, she's wearing, it's because I, I was wearing maybe like sandals or something. And they were like, you were barefoot. Sandals, or you she's were barefoot. barefoot or she's like that. And they would just start picking on me and be like, oh, that's not my, friend. and then, and then later on, um, everybody started admiring me. Like, whoa, she can do it. She can do it with her pinky and everything. Wow, this is crazy. And it was, it was, um, 
which it kind of motivated me to do it more even because of um i had i wasn't getting picked on for it anymore i was actually having people like wow she can do this i want to try too which is what my dad was gonna say with the wood floor queen challenge where it was a challenge online where you had to try to post a video of you running the epic with your pinky and it was that's, and which is and which is kind of like my signature thing that i do because that's how i got famous <laughs> that is very impressive i i don't i've I have not had the opportunity to run a buffer, but I'm sure it would take me a minute to figure out. So I know yeah. it's a I know it's a weight thing and a balance thing. And right. I, I I I I get the mathematics behind it. I would have we to have actually, experience doing it. We actually we actually had we um, hired a guy who's actually been experienced with flooring. He's actually been doing with flooring for a while, and. He was using the Epic on the floors, right? And my dad was like, what's taking you so long to get these marks out? And he was like, what? I'm doing the Epic. And he was doing, he was clocking it at 12 o'clock. And we were like, gosh. And that's it don't that's clock at 12 o'clock. You, you clock at 3 o'clock. <laughs> you do it at 3 o'clock. And, and, when that's, and, I was, and whenever my, and my dad told me, hey, how do you do it? Show him how to do it. And I did a 3 o'clock. And that gets it right out, and he was like, "Wow!" And everything, and it's, it's the, it depends on how you, how you move your weight, what way you move it, how you control it. Like, it's like, it's like, it's, it's. I can't describe what it's like. It's like you're trying to control something that wants to do the very opposite thing of what you're trying to do. <laughs> so, actually. It's the same way with the edger. Um, I started using the edger when I was ten too, and um, and I started using the edger and everything. And like I said, it wants to do the exact opposite of what you want it to do because that sandpaper on the bottom, it since it's going in a circle, it's going to want to jerk you off that way. And that's why I've had people ask me my technique with the edger. And I, instead of using straight arms, I use my knees with it. So instead of just rocking my arms back and forth, I go at my knees to get complete control of it. Because if you don't, you're gonna gouge out, or you're gonna, um, or you're gonna leave a slim line around the wall because you didn't have complete control of it. And uh, I will say this: one of the things that. Uh that we were blessed to be able to do. Uh, and I told you that we worked with a company here since the fifties mm -hmm. and, uh, that had been in the business since the fifties. Uh, we are in a predominantly oil rich, um, uh, uh, place. So every single flooring company here uses oil based products. And that's what we learned to do. You know, we had a, uh, a top notch way of making it happen every single time using oil base and, uh, bringing my daughter up in this business um we were blessed to be able to hook up with uh Loba Wackel and uh and be able to do some really quality uh water-based uh coatings that uh, are you know uh almost zero voc you know okay. and uh that's a fantastic thing uh because we're able to train hannah in the finishing uh aspect of the job as well yeah, so that's the other you know let me tell him. Okay. That's one of the things that you uh, highly excel at, in my opinion, uh, and and you're very helpful to me. And that is uh, that she can really cut in floors great. Uh, she has some serious eyeballs to be able to, you know, check and double check and to do the edges and everything. And mm -hmm. they can actually roll the floor out if she wanted to roll it. But uh, typically, what we do is she comes in and does the cutting in on the on the coatings on it, but. Me and her can go out and coat, you know, a couple thousand square feet in an hour, you know, and, Jeez. <laughs> you know, back when we used to do it, you know, back in the day, it would take, you know, three or four grown men to do 2,000 square foot in a day. And me mm -hmm. and her go out and do 2,000 square feet twice in a day and double coat that sucker. Whenever, yeah. whenever, I, was, whenever I was smaller, I did do some of the oil jobs with my dad with, but, the, um, with the six inch brush and everything. But but later it wasn't on, a big job. 
Yeah, but it wasn't a big job because of the harmful chemicals in it. So, um, whenever, um, at first we started, at first we were using the oil, which I wasn't able to be on most of the jobs, even though I did sometimes go on them, I wasn't on most of them because of the chemicals. <laughs> right. Well, whenever we got with the water base, I, it was a complete change for me because I got to actually be on almost every single job to help him. And since I'm experienced in it, half the time now, our workers like never do the finish with him because he always asks me to do it. <laughs> Which I, all the time, it's... it's you always want pros to do finish, so you never want to let some rookie person put on the finish because you go through so much. Yeah. I've, I've took, since whenever I took my classes, whenever I went to American Standard School, and whenever I went to Lagler School, and all of them, and they also showed us how to do finish, they were like, wow, look at our coding skills. Or even when we went to NWFA, and whenever we went to um, the logo booth, and they said, hey, if Hannah, if you want to, you can put this um, new Super 2K on there, and you can do the palette for us. And I was doing the palette, and people were freaking out in NWFA. <laughs> like, they started to become a big crowd around me. And all I was doing was rolling on some finish. And they were like, wow, look at her. She's rolling on finish. <laughs> the 10-year-old putting on finish. And I'm like, yeah, like, okay. And everybody was freaking out. And actually, I, th- I was like, I was actually, um, there were so many people that actually some people got mad at me at NWFA because I was taking so many pictures and signing so many things. And some people got mad at me because I didn't take a picture with them yet. They were like, oh. you didn't take a picture with me yet? And I was like, I'm sorry, wait. And there was so many people. <laughs> like, I was running back and forth, booths all around NWFA. And we were in Seattle. So when we were, since we were, no, we were in Texas. Yeah, we were in Texas since right. we were in this um it was a big like a big event like it was a mm-hmm. huge thing it wasn't small like most of mississippi and so you couldn't just walk maybe maybe a couple might be maybe at least the worst a mile instead you had to walk about three miles <laughs> <laughs> to, to get across the whole room to go take a picture with this guy and it was crazy at nwfa but um, the whole time, it's like, oh, it's, it's that was your first I'm, NWFA show too. Yeah, oh man, which you we NWFA, y- but we're gonna get to because y- of the delays. But you are having a very interesting upbringing into this world, and it is it is absolutely crazy to hear because. I, I'm glad to hear you're getting a lot of respect from people and they're not upset and they're not being mean to you and they're not coming down on your dad and they're 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 I mean there is a little percentage of people, maybe like five or ten percent of the people are like, Hey, she's not wearing knee pads, hey, she's not wearing a mask or whatever. <laughs> but it's the smallest thing too. Like it, I and you know better have your reason. picture right. If you don't See, if you're missing one reason. thing in the picture, you're gonna get grilled. See, people don't people don't understand is the reason why I don't wear um, knee pads, first of all, is because they don't make knee pads for kids. They're too big and bulky on me. They're not made. <laughs> you actually do body. have uh, be, uh, Bruno Gunlock or whatever, own, Bino Gunlock, have, the good ones. Mm-hmm. I have my own pair of brand new Bino Gunlock um, uh, knee pads that aren't even open yet, but I don't use them because they're too big on me. Uh, they don't make them for children. Yeah. So and and the other thing one is, one uh, Hannah is, is not a full time employee working yeah. uh, eight hours or 10 hours yeah. a day on the job. Now, there has yeah. been times when she's been on the job uh, that long, but there's very rare times that she works the full eight hours too. She might come in and do one hour and swim the rest of the day. Uh, however, the pictures don't, uh, you can't. Uh, you know, uh, judge well, judge the picture by oh well, she's slaving away on her knees off. No, well, also, she took also, a picture. Was <laughs> so yeah, people, she's doing the work, also, but you know, not. Also, some people think it's like 
fake, like, the, my dad will be like, say I'm over here playing video games. My dad will be like, hey, come over here and run this for a couple minutes so I can take a video. Then you can go back. When right, I'm so actually, there's a fine line in the I'm thing. Not, we're I'm we're not just staging pictures, a, but we're not doing yeah. child labor either, you know, at the yeah. same it's time. Like, so but there, like there's, there's extreme. Worker, but at the same time, I'm not running over there doing something and then going back to video games or whatever just for the video that's enough that's like i said that's another thing that people don't understand they'll be like oh either you're doing you're doing child labor she shouldn't be over there working well first of all i'm the one who asked to work second of all i wanted to and third of all you can't sit there and blame my dad when i'm over here having fun doing it and it, it sometimes it actually gets me pretty frustrated and kind of mad because they're like they're 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 saying mean and bad things about my dad and they it's not my dad. I'm the one who asked to do it. To me it's fun and it's the it's the thing that they're like, Oh, you should, you're doing child labor and some people put it the exact opposite way around where I don't actually work with him. All I do is I go over there, use it for maybe two minutes for the video, walk away, never use it again. Yeah. That's the video. So there's two different things that, but it just gets me really frustrated when people be mean to my dad like that. And they're like, you're doing child labor when I'm the one who actually wanted to do it. So You know what? I, you bring up a good point. And I, it's frustrating because you're you're out there, you're wanting to have fun and you're wanting to do it and learn. And you have people that accuse you of not being able to do it and faking it. You have people that are on you because you don't have your knee pads or a mask or child labor <laughs> laws and things like that. Honestly, we, we all get it. I can go post a picture up and, you know, look, let's let's be real. Sometimes age joints just happen and you don't catch it. Right. But someone's going to catch it and they're going to bust your butt about it. And they're not oh, yeah. it just boring. Just, people are notorious about this, so you know. So, it, like, dad, hearing protection, dad, yeah. hearing protection, knee pads, dad. Uh, <laughs> you know, just little things like correct. This. Like, good God, she did not. You know, she's uh, mainly out at the swimming pool on this particular <laughs> deal, but you really can't come in and do the backstory on it. You know, correct. <laughs> and you're always going to get a little something. You're never going to please a hundred percent of everybody. But if you're out there having fun and you're being safe. Uh, then yeah, I, I'm not worried about it, yeah. and I don't think now, your dad is Now, one either. thing that I will say this for for this particular time, and, and you know, it's a it's a very uh, terrible and strange time, you know, in our in our history here with the COVID nineteen thing yeah. going on. That Hannah is not on any job sites now, okay. so she yeah, is uh, any, actually in kind of quarantine said, situation at our house. Posted, and Hannah, that's let me why tell. We haven't them. posted any videos or. Right, because it's not, you know, she's not on the job site, but. Because uh, of the thing going around, but the, but the thing is, is the, another thing is, is I'm staying home, but I'm doing my school and different things like that. And right. my dad, he's still doing his work, but it's to be able to afford for, um, for um, the essential things that you need, like food and different things like that. And uh, that's the reasons why we haven't been posting any photos or videos of me on the job. And actually, we've had some people comment like, hey, hey, is Hannah okay? Because I haven't been in any of the mm -hmm. posts. And I just want to address that I am okay. It's just that I'm staying in quarantine because... Um, uh, when I was smaller, I had bronchitis and pneumonia, and then when I got a little older, um, some things happened in my life, and I got asthma for a while, and I have... Uh, my lungs are good, but if you gave me a sickness that's made to break down your lungs, then I would probably die. But that's the reason why I haven't been in any of the posts or videos and stuff. Because I am in quarantine. Yeah, no, better safe than sorry. So and you, that, that's also why we uh, invested in all the dust free equipment mm -hmm. as well. So me, I don't have to breathe uh, any of the uh, dust. Very, just, very minimal. Not, Same way for you. A, it's not just the knee pads. They're like she's not wearing a mask. 
I'm like, um, there is no dust. What am I? <laughs> what am I protecting myself from? Yeah. Air? Like, Apparently, they don't have the same dust control that we have, Hannah. That's the deal. Actually, <laughs> no, you know, there's a lot of guys that don't have that equipment, that's sadly. Way, right. Isn't that, isn't that the way that we got Miss Kelly's job? Because, right. Because, um, yeah, we, had, we have a foreign competitor down here, and our customer got two estimates. One from us and one from another foreign guy who is one of our main competitors. And we, he, she was like, I think I'm going to go with him because he's cheaper. And we were like, you want to know why he's cheaper? And we showed her a Facebook photo photo of him. And he was standing with an R16 DC with three inches of dust on the floor. <laughs> and, and, then, and, then he, and then he showed her a video of us with absolutely no dust. And then right then and there she went, oh, never mind. You get the job. Oh, man. And, Hannah, and how much, how much of the company do you own? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you cracked she's, me up. She's the, she's my only child, so you know. <laughs> she's gonna get a hundred percent of it. I get it. I just she's gotta. I, I gotta give her a little bit of a hard time. It's very cute, and I love it because she's taking pride in what you've built, and I love that. Right. I, I I'm definitely just giving you a hard time. Um. I, okay. So I wanna I wanna go kind of backwards a little bit here. Earlier, you mentioned that you had done some like American Sanders and a, and a Loba class and and a couple classes. Yeah. Can you? So are you? Certified through American Sanders with their with I their equipment. Am, um, I am PSP certified, and I am also American Sanders certified. I have, um, I have gone through a full American Sanders classes, um, full PST Lagler classes. I have also gone through um, some like the short Loba classes, not like the full classes, but I've gone through some of the smaller ones, like the demo classes. Um, we are pl- we were planning on going to Rubio and Loba and maybe even Bona, but we didn't get to do such thing because of COVID. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so do um, you think to go to the WFA and Loba school, but we didn't get to do such thing. But right now I have two plaques. So okay. So do you think that getting that extra training from the manufacturers? is important um actually it depends on how long you've been in the business you do for me it helped me on um some things and on some things i already knew and it's really good like amazing like the best it's what you need if you're new to it and then if you're a little bit later on it it's actually also good for you because you can learn things that you didn't know in American Sanders School, I learned um, 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 some different things on um, some finish techniques, and I've also learned some different on um, on um, the flooring. And my dad actually—we lost you, Anna. You there? It's fun of me. Yes, I'm here. Okay. My dad <laughs> we lost you. My, my dad actually makes fun of me now in my classes and since my classes because my dad he would be listening but I was like in there like I was paying attention so hard my dad actually makes fun of me for it but um I and now I don't remember half the things and I remember every single part of it my dad actually has me do like he's like you remember how to do this i'm like yes he's like can you do that for me i'm like yeah sure like <laughs> in mpsp training i learned a lot about the hummel that i didn't know before and i learned a lot about the flip i've learned trio um and um in american standards school i learned a couple more different things about the edger and the um epic also the r16 and um i learned different things about grits and stuff even though we have our own pattern of grits but um it was they were they helped um they helped me a lot especially the psp training um it was a one-on-one and that was um really good i actually learned a lot from that like i said mostly about the hummel and stuff and it was 
I even learned how to water pop. That was my first time ever seeing like <laughs> people actually water pop because we usually don't water pop. But that was my first time. <laughs> I helped him. I helped do the oil, and um, I did the rest of it. But my um, we we um, we and now sometimes whenever I was on the jobs, my um, I I um, help teach our workers some of the things that I learned in PST and, and um, AS and it was pretty cool. Okay. I liked it. So, and you know you got to think about this uh, that those classes from the manufacturer are very beneficial to learning uh, tips and tricks on each one of those machines. Mm -hmm. uh, how to work on each machine. Uh, multiple things that you just don't learn in the book or when you buy a new machine. Um, they don't say, they do. it's just the words aren't there. Uh, I remember when I uh, my bought dad, my first. Uh, last two, new flip. With the new flip, um, my dad had me um, do two things. So we had to change out the plugs inside of it. So my dad, he asked me if I remembered. And I was like, of course. So I unscrewed the top and I did all the plugs and everything. And then I adjust the wheels and I did everything. And the flip was all right. And it was. <laughs> It, 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 we have, we learned, like I said, we learned a lot of different things mm -hmm. from a lot of those machines that I didn't know before. Very beneficial training, and it's yes. worth every minute of your time to go do something especially, like that. Okay. Highly recommend that to especially everybody. The PST, especially the PST, because you're on one-on-one -on -one training. You can ask as many questions as you want. Actually, in the in the training, I uh, teach it. Be asking questions. I'm like, okay, don't worry. <laughs> well, so I, I'm a huge proponent and supporter of anyone that goes out and gets certifications, whether they're NWFA or your CPI through the Ceramic Tile Education Foundation. Um, you could do CFI, Certified Flooring Installers, whether it's tile, hardwood, carpet, whatever that's going to be. So I would love to know both of your opinions on, you know, what you think those classes do for you for your business um your friendships any, anything like that like I, I, joe i don't know if you have any nwfa certifications or if you plan on going and getting them with hannah at the same time you know wh how do you feel about that kind of stuff what do you think it can do we were for your actually, business we're, we were actually talking to the people in nwfa and they were going to give us online classes and then let me do the classes but like we said since the covid went around we have, we've been delayed a lot in our classes mm -hmm. and NWFA and everything, so. Uh, yeah, the, all the uh, classes are, uh, you know, very beneficial to have anything like that. And it does give you a one-up on all your competitors having uh, certification and then also just having uh, all around anything that uh, that helps you to learn this trade because, um each person has a bit of knowledge that they can share with you and make you a better flooring contractor, you know? And uh, so you can do this job for 30 years and still be learning something and or 40 years and still be learning something. You know, there's always some, a different technique on advanced mastery and, you know, uh, the camaraderie of the whole entire, you know, I, uh, uh, several years ago I, I think we we started a group and uh on facebook uh with a couple of guys and uh and uh we grew that group to about 400 450 people of the the best flooring people in the united states and we always just bounce ideas off of each other and put all kinds of stuff out there and uh, and, and we really, uh, we met up for the first time at one of the NWFAs in Charlotte that we had, I think it was 2015. We all met up or yeah, no, it was 2015 was in, uh, St. Louis and then 2016 was in Charlotte. And, uh, but really we all came together in Charlotte there and it was really, you know, we have a picture of us and there's probably like 30 or 40 of us met up there, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, because we had met, had you know, uh, we had. Yeah. Known each other online this whole time, but we really never had the group meet together. Yeah. You know, and, and what we did in Charlotte. And uh, from, since then, you know, we have uh, such great camaraderie all the way around in the United States. We can really go just like 
a person would be like a rock star. You could just go anywhere you want. We have, you know, Lenny Hall. You could go meet him down and go work with him down in Miami. We could go up to Washington, D.C. And uh, work. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can work. Okay, I'm sorry. No, you're um, good. Anyway, you could go to uh, Washington, D.C. and work up there with the some of the government killer jobs up there or, you know, and, and Spriggs done that up there. And we could go to Colorado and work out there with Joni and, and Joe Rocco. I mean, just there's so many different uh, opportunities that are available Definitely. to somebody that reaches out in the, uh, in this industry. And uh, once, you know, they know, you know, know you're the, it, you know, sky's the limit on what you can do. And uh, so it's a great thing. The school is a great thing. The, uh, the uh, camaraderie. And there's uh, almost every day I'll have somebody reach out to me in some way, shape or form and ask me. I mean, even pro people that teach for NWFA, NWFA teachers call me and ask me different things, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, I teach them. They teach me. And it's a great thing. So, you know, we haven't. Uh, been, uh, you know, we hadn't went to school, you know, basically I run my own business. So, uh, and we've done this, you know, like I said, for, you know, over 20 years. So, but, uh, I think there is a place, you know, that a person could get the extra time that it would be beneficial to go in and get some of the, uh, credentials, you know, in our area, it doesn't really, there's not that many people, oh, are you NWFA certified or anything? I do believe that there are certain areas in the United States that, you know, that would be a, you would have to have it or, you know, you would never get a job, you know? Yeah. But, uh, you know, there are people that aren't NWFA certified, you know, that actually know their stuff just as well as a person who is. Uh, however, the certificate would be beneficial probably everywhere, but, you know, certain places it's probably essential to have it because your competitors, you know, you would never be able to get a job. Yeah. No, I'm with you. And I think it it's one of those things a lot of guys are like, how do I market it? How do I market it? Well, the certificate only means as much as you make of it. If you're going to advertise right. it, you can advertise it. And honestly... I'm the only certified flooring installer for hardwood and laminate within 250 miles of Mesa, Arizona. There's a bunch wow. of there's a bunch of CFI guys that are carpet certified, but I'm the only one that has the hardwood and laminate certification. Right. So that's a great advertising point when I put things out there. I'm the only one in 250 miles that has this. Right. But they don't know what that means. Right. So it's more of hey, look, I invested in myself. Right. And, and I took that. the time to not make money, leave the state, go somewhere else, put myself up in a hotel right. and get an education. And that's right. That's what you're really going to market is that you're invested in knowing more than the next guy. You're getting right. a continuing education. So I think that's where a lot of the importance of it comes in and what you can actually market. Right. To I believe so, so, too. And you can also charge, you know, accordingly to that because you're you're actually offering them a higher quality of service due to your credentials, you know, what you've learned. Definitely. You're able to go in and not make the mistakes of the other guy who doesn't have the benefits of going to the class. So Correct. You should be able to offer more value. So right. Hannah, I, I got a question for you, young lady. A lot of people are gonna say that you're lazy. And even without knowing you as you grow up, and they're going to say your generation is lazy. So what do this is kind this might be kind of a hard question for you at 11, but I want to hear mm-hmm. an honest, the best answer you can give me. What do us as adults need to know about how your generation thinks so that we can motivate you to work hard? What do you what do you think we need to do to get you excited about working? Man, that is a hard question. <laughs> I know um, you're still a little young, but try try and give me a little something if you can. Well, that would be a very hard thing to do, like you said. But um, probably to try to make it funner. To have the kids see that it's not just straight work in their eyes. To not be like, that's working, that's working at... Because when you just tell the kid, hey, do you want to do work? Or, hey, do you want to do floors? They're going to be like, no, that's work. <laughs> like, no. But if you, like, try to make it, it's the same way for, like, say you're, like, a little, like, a baby or whatever. 
and say you don't want to eat or say you don't want to do this. You make it fun for them and all of a sudden they want to do it. It's the same way even when you're maybe 10 years, 11 years older, try, you just, um, like, you'd be, like I said, whenever they hear work or whenever they hear floors, they're going to be like, no, that's a job, that's work, I don't want to do it. And if you well, try to make... Hannah, we find that uh, most people uh, think that uh, they've already attained um, they actually come in with their family's credentials. So what it's, it's, it's a sad situation for most people. They, they think that, uh, they don't need to have a job because they're already rich because their family's rich. Mm-hmm. So they have this, uh, already attained type attitude. Well, uh, you know, this is, this is my house. It's really not their house. It's their parents' house, Yeah, but they've already you know, their parents have brought them up in such a way that, oh, this is my house. And they never did anything for it. And they're not going to do anything for it because they don't have I, to do anything. But for see, it. I've grown up in a way where I did get spoiled and everything. But at the same time, <laughs> but at the same time, I knew the difference. I wasn't always like that. I, I knew the difference between. Um, between what was going on, like, all the time you spoil me, all the time. But it's not like an all-the-time, every-time thing. You And you work for it, though, too. So I do. You're not... actually, actually, that's what, actually, I've made some customers like, aw, and I'm like, what? And it's because of, actually, whenever my dad, when I work for my dad, sometimes he does give me money. Mm-hmm. But sometimes... Um, he doesn't, but I tell the customer, he's like, oh, does your dad give you money? I was like, sometimes, but other times he pays me in water, electricity. He pays me in being able to have, um, being able to have a roof over my head, being able to have gas, you know, taking me places. School. Unbelievable. Education. I get paid in lights, water, and a shelter. That's that's such a mature outlook. It, it's it's absolutely you've raised a magnificent daughter, Joe. Like congratulations, <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> um, Hannah. You made an amazing point. You said I want to relate this back to something you said at the very beginning. You said you have to make it fun and not be work. And then you compared it to feeding a baby and doing like an airplane move to get them to eat. <laughs> but at the very beginning, you said I love the art. Whether yes. it's installing, sanding, finishing, you're you're right in that sand and finish work from installation through finishing is is an art form, and it's it's amazing. So if you sell the art form and that they are going to walk away from something going from raw wood to fin- yeah, beautiful like, finished product, it's like yes, it's like an artist having a gigantic portrait. Exactly. If it's if like, if you can sell that, then you're not selling work. You're selling a career. Art. You're selling a, selling a trade. Selling a trade. Exactly. It's not. It's it's not like oh, it's a floor. I don't want to do anything with a floor. It's a floor. People walk on it. It's the art of it. It's the trade of the floor. Mm-hmm. No, that's, and you look that's at even like right now, even during this COVID uh, situation, we're considering an ins- essential trade. And um, there are people that are just, you know, they it's not something that everybody can do. Mm-hmm. And uh, and this trade will actually, you know, put money in your pocket. So it can if you know what you're doing. Uh, it, even it, during this time. That's correct. what I'm saying. During yeah. this time, when people are sitting around with no job, there are people that are still seeking services, wood floor services to be done. And, you know, uh, that's a great thing. Is, is Definitely. Just think if you didn't have that and you had, you know, uh, you were, you know, had just a regular job, <laughs> you know, anybody could do it, you know. So that's part of the deal. Uh, here it's such a very um, detailed job and you have to be so on point at the whole you know every single part of it uh yeah. really not a whole time very few times that you can you know let your 
guard down and just do whatever you want. You got to constantly be paying attention. You well, always yeah. have to be paying attention. Well, you said it earlier. You have to be a, a professional at everything, whether you're sweeping yeah, the room, vacuumer. cutting. I mean, exactly. Who's a professional vacuumer? Right? <laughs> Flooring and people. You don't teach people that. <laughs> right. You teach people that, and they're like, oh my God, you're such an ass. Why do I have to do it this way? It's like you have to do it this Correct. way because that's what gets you the clean coats in the floor. You know, yep. that's the first start to getting the clean coats it's... in the floors, vacuuming masterfully and then tactiling masterfully. And even, you know, the art of tactiling is, I mean, think about it, the art of tactiling, how stupid that sounds, but gonna, it's real. I was going to say, go back to the part where you said, how do you, um, how do you influence children to do it? Well, um, another thing that is that don't take it wrong that you want to make it fun, but at the same time, you don't want to lie to the kid and be like, oh, it's fun. It's going to be amazing. You're going to be able to do a floor and everything. Because that's just going to make the kid be like, um, they're not going to want to do it. It's like over-exaggerating it. That's the word. Yeah. You're over So you want to be, you want to make it fun and everything, but at the same time you want to go overboard because that's just going to make it even worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I totally agree. And finding that, you know, 17, 18, 19 year old boy, girl, whoever it's going to be to come on board and, and get excited about it. it. They're they're rare. They're hard to find. But it's very hard to find. It, it, at, at this point in time, with the age of the average installer continuing to only go up and not down, you know, we've got to do something. And a lot of. My, my my new big thing besides encouraging people to learn while they earn through the podcast is that they're they're apprentices they're not helpers and it, it, right where, what, what are you gonna what do you aspire to be when you're just a helper you have nowhere to go right whereas if you're an apprentice that you you're working towards something that's the that's the whole point of being an apprentice so we've right. got to change a lot of the mindsets of what we're doing and then Agreed. we can you know I, I think that's right Hannah's Hannah's right on track and she's got a big future because she's already wanting to make something fun and exciting instead of it just being a job. Yeah. Right. A, just a regular job or work, just a good old job. I, I it's, it's different. And the thing is, you, once you uh, become a skilled apprentice, you're hard to replace. Mm -hmm. that, <laughs> and you see, that's, that's the, uh, that's the value of that person adds to the job is when they actually take the the uh, skills and put them to use. Uh, then your training, uh, you know, that you've invested in somebody uh, comes uh, a full because, circle to where they're beneficial not, to you. You're beneficial to I'm them. Not, I'm not just helping my dad. I'm also helping myself. I'm helping my dad with my skills that I've learned with the job, but I'm also helping myself to being an 11 year old already with a career. And like, it's, it's, it's not just helping. It's not just helping one thing. It's helping multiple things at a time. And th that's why I'm still doing it to this day because of, I took those little, it could, you gotta think about it. It went from a vacuum a vacuum, a sight of a vacuum, <laughs> to being this. And I, when I was smaller, I never knew I was going to get famous. I never knew I was going to be on podcasts, magazines. I didn't know I was going to be signing autographs and stuff. I just thought, hey, I'm just going to do this. Mm -hmm. And I just, I never knew that this was going to happen. And now that I looked at today, it was, it was a thing. And, and that's another thing also with it. You don't want to do flooring as a kid just to get famous. I started when I was young, not to be. No, my dad wasn't like, "Hey, you're gonna get famous. You should do this." <laughs> it was to do it out of fun. Correct. I never knew this was ever gonna happen. Yeah. At the age of three or four, or five or six, I was. We were still on Facebook at that time. We had no Instagram, no nothing. It's just Facebook, and. I was, I, I didn't care. I was doing it for the fun of it. And I was doing it because I wanted to. I would have never looked up in my life and thought, I'm going to get famous from doing floors. 
No, and I mean you yeah. have a you have a very good head on your shoulders for being so young, and you're you're able to look into the future and see what something can evolve into. Um, you have a very supportive father, and that that makes all the difference in the world on why you are the young lady that you are, and it's it's absolutely amazing. But you're you're right. Yeah. You, you started with a pure intention, and you haven't let it go to your head, which is great. And it, you will be able to go places because of that. Whether you decide to leave flooring or not, it, you know that's to be seen. But no matter what you end up doing, you have a really good base. Of, mm -hmm. of knowledge so that you can be successful at whatever you decide to do. And see, to be honest, I take absolutely none of the credit of it. I give it all to my dad. <laughs> no, hey. that's very sweet. So uh, is there anything else you guys want to you wanna say, you want to cover? Otherwise, if you just go ahead and... Uh, Let's let's plug anything you want to plug. I know you've got your Instagrams where people can follow you and find out what's going on. Uh, Joe, you can plug your business. Anything you wanna you wanna throw out there? Okay. Well, uh, you know we have uh, we've been on uh, Facebook, you know Dawson Arbor Forest there, but uh, that's it, Facebook's kind of uh, evolved into you know it's pretty much personal stuff now. Back in the day when when we started the group and everything, we had. Uh, all the people were, you know, we were Facebooker people, and we still run some groups on there and stuff like that with the, with all the professionals and stuff. But uh, they're mainly closed groups. Okay. So, uh, but uh, our business really, you know, with the business side of it, it's really the Instagram stuff. So, you know, we're on there uh, uh, just in our name, Dawson Harbor Forest. Yeah, and you then, can follow him at Dawson Harbor Forest. I actually have two things that you can follow on Instagram. Um, hashtag wood floor queen and just wood floor queen. Okay. Yeah, right. my hashtag wood floor queen is all my hashtags of wood floor queen, but my per my personal account, um, like my actual personal account run by myself, is wood floor queen. So. All right. Awesome. I thank you so much, both of you, for coming on and talking about your family's history, Hannah, how you got involved, where you're going. Um, I, I, I'm flabbergasted, to be honest. My, my son's 10, and I could not get him to have a conversation like this with me and articulate it so well. So, Joe, amazing daughter. Um, way to build up a business, have employees. Um, you're, you're doing things right over there, apparently. And um, Thank you. I, I guess I'm going to have to have you on by yourself because you're you're obviously running a successful business and that's a lot of guys can't do that, sadly. And that's what we're here to, to learn about. So right. I'm definitely going to have to hook up with you again. But thank you for yeah, letting us enjoy no Hannah. Um, no problem. Hannah, again, you're amazing. You you are. Thank you. You are a wonderful young lady that is mature beyond your years. So thank you for spending time with us and sharing your insights about oh, no, the flooring oh, no. world. For me, for me, it was a pleasure to do this. <laughs> I had I had fun doing it. Awesome. Thank you both. And uh, I will I will continue to follow your, your exploits there. And uh, I'll stay in <laughs> we touch. We appreciate you. you. Yep. All right, man. Thank you very much. Yep. Have a good evening. All right, man. God Bye. bless. That's all the time we have for this week. To keep the conversation going, head on over to the Floor Education Facebook group. Be sure to subscribe so you can hear each and every episode. We can be found on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and most major podcast directories. Don't forget to leave a review and let us know what you think about the show. If you'd like to be a guest, have questions or feedback, you can email us at flooreducation at gmail.com. You can help support the show by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash flooreducation. Remember, your education never stops.